Uh, my name is Andre, and I'm doing international relations and political science. Uh, nice to meet you, Andre. Oh, have you had a job? Uh, yeah. Uh, what was like the worst job you've ever had? Uh, Hungry Jacks on Rundle Street. My name is Jesse, and like I think this will get run off in the I'm doing international relations. <laughs> <laughs> Just say Chris Hemsworth. 
postgrad students here as well, and obviously a bulk of master's students. So I might actually just ask Rob to say a few words as teaching program director, just a few words of welcome and maybe a little bit about anything you want to add to the various degrees people are um, studying and any kind of tips for starting out at uni. Then again, can I just double check you can all hear me? Yeah. Yes. yeah, great stuff. Look, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's so good to see the back of the heads of many of you in the room <laughs> and some of those of you in line. Just to say the actual correct answer about midnight snack is Marmite on toast and not the answer <laughs> previously given. Um, yeah, so hello. Look, I am Rob. I'm the teaching program director for the government group and I teach mostly into the undergraduate programs, but I kind of oversee and coordinate a lot of the teaching programs here with the group. And so I thought I'd just say a few, a few words. I think there would have been one already this morning, but just to do a quick acknowledgement of country too. So just recognising the land that we meet on is the land of the Ghana people. And we recognise the Ghana people as the traditional custodians of the land that we meet on. And I recognise their leaders, past, present and emerging. I'm currently on Ghana land. I'm sure you are too, at Bedford Park. Uh, but of course, Flinders campus and many of our students are not always on Ghana land. So I recognise all the First Nations people. And I'm going to come back to that in a second about um, there. So welcome uh, to Flinders and welcome to the university, especially if you're new. It's so great to see you and I can't wait to get to meet you and chat to you over the coming weeks. I just had some some thoughts some reflections, some things to say. Um, I won't try and overwhelm you because I think in the first week you get so much information it gets a bit um, overwhelming. First thing is get to know your staff. Come and meet the uh, your uh, colleagues who teach in politics. Unfortunately, a number of us couldn't be there in person today. I was coming in this morning, but then my 10 year old has been vomiting all morning and I didn't, I didn't think I'd bring in a vomiting 10 year old into the classroom. So, um, but get to know your kind of colleagues. We're, we're in the corridors, come and tap on our doors, come and, come and chat to us about your studies and introduce yourselves because it would be great to meet you. Um, I just thought I'd say a couple of things really. One is, so this week you'll probably get an O week, you'll get lots of information about studying at Flinders and online. But I was just thinking about studying politics and studying international relations and public policy. You know, what are we doing? We're, what we're doing is as students, and you know, one sense staff are students too, because we're still learning is we're exploring the big questions in life. We're doing the, we're trying to understand some of the big things that are happening. So for example, I teach Australian politics. And one of the things that's really interesting in the last 10 years or so, support for democracy has gone backwards in Australia. The overall levels of trust have declined rapidly. And Australia's democracy, for example, has been downgraded in the last democracy index that came out. So something's going a bit wrong with Australian democracy. And us as students might well want to ask what's going on. So similarly, we could ask other questions. So the big thing that will be happening this year, particularly for Australian citizens, is that for the first time in decades, there's going to be a constitutional referendum on a voice to parliament. So this links back to my Ghana acknowledgement. And again, as students of politics and international relations, how is it then that nation states build a relationship between indigenous peoples and non-indigenous peoples? What is the voice? You know, what will it do? Will it be a toothless institution as someone like uh, Senator Lydia Thorpe is saying? Or actually, would it be a meaningful part of a package of reconciliation? But then we can also look around the field of international relations. That's not necessarily my field, but Jessica will speak to this. But like the kind of obviously the illegal invasion of Ukraine, for example, that's having profound consequences, not just for the shell-shocked people of the Ukraine and surrounding areas and regions, but in terms of the global economy and how that's playing out. What's what's the out, what's the end game there for Putin in terms of what's going on there? For students of IR, you're going to be kind of exploring, trying to understand these questions. And then I was also thinking lastly, you know, what's the biggest humanitarian crisis in the world? Where is it in the world? What, what's, what's the answer? Probably, the way it's captured is probably in Yemen. The kind of uh, the onslaught and attack that's been taking place in Yemen, for example, is probably uh, per capita the biggest humanitarian crisis in the world. And again, why is this not in the same getting the same attention, for example, as the Ukraine war is, for example? So unpicking some of these questions. So the point being, 
is that you know we're here at university to try and think about these big questions and study them and take them on and in our different programs we do that in different ways for undergraduate students you know it's un understanding the nuts and bolts the foundations of these and in your elective topics you can you know find the areas that you're passionate about and for the master's students in the room and also online a really special welcome to you guys because i know that the bulk of the the people in the room are our undergrad students but for our master's students often uh, international students coming from uh, from different countries around the world many of you i know are working in the public sector and looking to improve your skills to be stronger public servants and making a difference in your countries and in your kind of future so they're really important questions um i just thought i would say would say something along those kind of lines and the other thing as well is i know that also we've got quite a lot of students in the room who are doing law and politics Law is obviously the really boring bit, and politics is the really fun stuff. Okay, so, so when you're doing talks or something like that, which we know is really boring, the reason you're studying politics and IR is because that's the exciting stuff. Um, so, final couple of things to say, um, really. One is um, over the coming weeks, particularly in our first year topics, we're going to talk about being a better student. We're going to talk about being a good student and things like academic integrity. So one of the things now, for those guys of you who have just joined from year 12, you're now at tertiary education, we've got a different set of expectations around, around your kind of work and how you engage. And we're going to help you come on that journey to understand academic integrity and being a good student. The other things to say as well is that even in our first year, we're thinking about careers, jobs and places where you can take this skill. So at the end of your study of two, three years or however long it's going to be, hopefully you'll have the knowledge and skills to make a difference in your kind of chosen fields. And we try and scaffold some of that in there. There's lots of internships. There's lots of different ways we can we can help that. But you don't need to think about that now. And then the last thing I just want to say is, look, there's tons of support um, out there. There's, we want you guys to have a really good experience uh, studying at Flinders and that's for both undergraduate and postgraduate. Some students it's quite overwhelming and they don't feel like they fit in but there's loads of ways which we can help you. There's societies, we have dedicated support for our international students as an international students office, we have students who have special needs or need extra requirements. Again, there are ways in which we can support and help you. And the teaching staff, your tutors, and the, the, the student learning centre are all part of the package ways we can help you. So the, 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 the tragedy we hear sometimes is students who have a bit who have a bit of a tough time in their first year or so is sometimes, you know, just letting you know that there's tons of ways of support. So I'll stop talking because I think Jessica's going to um, kind of shoot me if I keep waffling on like this um, and just to say look welcome to Flinders it's really nice to meet you if you've got any questions come and find me send me a message and I'm really happy to chat and a sort of special welcome to particularly for our master's students because I know um, you're, you're kind of ready and primed and, and obviously there's no one in the classroom just to kind of greet you in person otherwise that welcome to Flinders and back to you Jessica thanks Rob appreciate that and I think I'll just quickly pass over to Maruka if you want to just introduce yourself and maybe just say a little bit about the mentoring program as well. I think you study law and politics, right? So you can refute Rob's comment if you want to. Um, <laughs> yes. So hello, everyone. I'm Maruka. I'm currently in my sixth year of law and international relations. Um, yes, I have to agree with Rob that the IR definitely keeps things a bit more interesting. Um, a little bit about mentoring program. Um, so the, between the four of us, we'll run sessions with you guys once a week for the first six weeks of uni, and then it will move to fortnightly after the um, semester break, and we'll just cover various topics um, about how to um, navigate through uni and um, just to be a support person if you need any help. Cool, thanks Maruka. Yeah, and there is one other mentor as well, Jordan, who couldn't be here today because he's actually studying. He's got an intensive like out of semester class that's taking place right now. Um, has everyone like been contacted by a mentor already or is that still going to happen? Yeah, quite a few nods, yes. <laughs> cool, okay, so you guys will know more about that than I do, but definitely take advantage of that. As Rob was saying, there are a lot of like resources and services available for students and for our postgrad students, 
the OASIS program, if you were in the orientation just now and you heard Gara speaking, Gara Ferber. So the OASIS Centre runs a really good program that's also designed more for post-grad students called Flinders Mates. So you might, I know you're already aware of that. Or have you been to that already? Okay, great. So that's brilliant. You've already found your way around. Um, so there were kind of a few things that I was going to mention, but you know what, I might just first of all check, like, are there any questions, burning questions or things that you guys wanted to ask of us? It's okay if there aren't, but just to pause for a second and see if there's anything particularly you guys want to know at this stage of myself or Rob or the mentors. Yeah, go for it. Sorry, what's your name? Jesse. Jesse. So are those, like, mentoring sessions, they're, not, they're just going to happen, like, randomly at times, but, like, might, you might need an extra or something, right? Like, so the question was, do the mentoring sessions for those online, do they just happen at random times when students might potentially have a tutorial or a lecture? And not be available. I'm going to throw that question over to our lovely mentors. Um, because I so don't know. how it works? Do you want to hold the mic just for people online? Um, so how it works is we get a, a schedule from our topic coordinator um, with your timetables, so it does not clash with your classes. And um, we put in our availability um, after uh, when there isn't uh, when you haven't uh, got classes, um, and you pick what time you are available and then um, we'll meet at that time and a uh, certain place um, yeah so, so it won't clash with any of your classes cool thank you thank sorry you. i'll just add um that probably in the next week or so we'll be sending you guys more emails about the mentoring sessions and when they'll be run and where to meet and stuff like that Yeah, so definitely, yeah, like take advantage of that. Any other questions or anything? Points of interest? Okay, cool. And I mean, I'm certainly happy to stick around also after we finish the big group. I know it can be like awkward to ask questions in the big group and answer any other questions people might have or things you're wondering about. Um, <clears throat> so there were just a few points that I guess I wanted to mention. First of all, that I, have, I don't think I've said this yet. I'm also the course coordinator for the Bachelor of International Relations and Political Science. So in that role, I'm also like an important go-to person for all of you. Like, I mean, we've got our enrollment advisors who you heard from in the big session who are absolutely amazing and they'll help you out with your study plans. Like if you're not sure exactly where all your classes fit or what type of electives you can take and things like that. But I'm also always a person like just email me. I'm very responsive on email. I should get back to you within 24 hours if I haven't, maybe something's wrong, just like email me again. So I'm always happy to take questions from students in the Bachelor of International Relations and Political Science. If, even if you're not sure if I'm the person to go to, just ask me and then I can field you on to someone else if that's appropriate. And for our post-grad students, just so that you know, we have, so the course coordinator for the Masters of Public Policy and the Masters of Public Administration is called Kat Robertson Hassani. I don't know if you've met her yet, but she should be teaching some of the topics, the classes into that, those master's degrees as well. And the course coordinator for the Master of International Relations, which you're doing, I believe, correct? That's Lewis de Vinha. So I'm sure you'll meet Lewis and both Kat and Lewis are very approachable and friendly and you obviously can go to them for any kind of queries you have about the course as well. So that's just an important point to note. And also I should note, we have about four people online. So could the people online maybe just put in which degree you're doing? Um, Manin, Manin Durji, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, but you said that you're doing a Masters of Public Policy, but we have about three other people online. So I think Stephanie Bradley and there was someone else as well. So if you could just put into the chat function which degree you're actually doing, and then we can find who's your appropriate course coordinator for those degrees as well. Um, so just a couple of other things I wanted to note that will be important for all of you going forward is that, first of all, as I said in the main session, so we're using a new online learning system this year called Canvas, and I just don't want people to get confused about that because it could potentially be confusing. So just to have in your minds, okay, most of my classes are in Canvas, but if a class doesn't show up there, it's probably because it's still in the old system, which was called Flow, FLO. So just to have that in your mind, if you ever can't find one of your classes, don't panic, it's probably in the other system. And the other thing I want to note is that, because you might sort of hear this and wonder like what's going to happen, or you might have already heard about that. 
but and Rob might want to speak to this as well, I don't know, but Flinders is actually creating like a new campus in the city that's going to open up in 2024. Have you guys already aware of that or actually like a lot of nods in the room? Were you already told about that from part of your orientation activities or? Oh, there, okay, because I missed the first half hour because I had an appointment. So, um, okay, that's brilliant. So that was something I just wanted to mention as well, just so you're all aware that that will obviously be done in a way that won't be disruptive to you as the cohort who's kind of the segue cohort in between being um, mostly on Bedford Park and then going also into the city. Um, and then I guess just like the final points that I wanted to say, like I feel like in orientation, you get a lot of information and it can be really overwhelming. So I more just want to indicate where you go to get things when you need them because um, you're not going to remember like every single service that you've been told about today in the kind of avalanche of information that you've been given. So the, the first one that I want to emphasize, which I'm sure was probably emphasized a lot in the big session, is just the Ask Flinders. So I don't know if you've all discovered it yet. Has anyone used Ask Flinders yet? Excellent, brilliant, amazing. So it's this really interesting thing and we have a kind of version for staff as well. And I remember when I first came to Flinders and I was using that service and I just thought, this is really bizarre. Like I'm putting in this random request into this like online thing, like how is it gonna to get to the right person? And sure enough, within 24 hours, like the exact right person from the exact correct team gets back to you. You know, thank you for your query. Like it's been handed on to whoever needs to deal with it. So if you're ever not sure where to go is the point I wanna make. Just chuck your question into Ask Flinders and it will get to someone and it will be dealt with. And even if, you know, um, it seems random or obscure, someone will work out where it should go. And then the second really important point of contact is just the topic coordinator. So you'll see those on your topic sites, topics is what we call classes, and just do reach out to them, you know, like do, if you have any question at all, like do make contact with us because we're all, I think, pretty approachable and we're here just like to help you and to make sure that you have a good experience. Um, so yeah, and then as Rob already mentioned, there are just like a ton of services available. So it's that same thing. If you need something, just go to Ask Flinders, put it in. Someone will get back to you and let you know what services are or resources are available for whatever you need. So I think that's it for me, Rob. I don't know if you want to add anything else. Otherwise, I'm going to let you all go on with your day and I'm happy to hang around and maybe our mentors can hang around as well. I don't know if either of you want to add anything. No, okay, cool. If you have any questions. That's all good. Look, thank you, Jessica. And look, just welcome to everyone. There's nothing much more I want to just add. I think particularly for the master's students, if you've got some queries around your kind of study plans in particular, then do reach out to the course coordinators because they will be back later next week and around and you know make yourself known to them because they'll be really keen to um, to kind of chat and make contact. Otherwise, uh, welcome everyone and look, have a great semester. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, everyone. Lovely to meet you all and we'll no doubt get to know you much better during semester. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Marika. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. That was Hi. Remind me your name? James. James. Um, you mentioned something about everyone doing their intro to like towards their democracy. Is it probably if I've chosen a different elective? I think that was all electives. So Rob's class is a core is a core topic, I believe. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm doing the double degree, which might make it a bit. It might be a bit different. It was all um, options topics to the first year. I mean, it was close like this. So I think I went into like the. Are you double degree with law? Yeah. So I'd done the American studies, like US and global context and state and so forth. And that was just. I mean, to be honest, like I'm not as across the exact study plan for someone who's doing a double degree okay. as the enrollment people will be. So if the enrollment people told you these are your topics oh, and this is your plan, they're probably correct. I had a vague look at the study plan and. I just took a guess from okay. that. Because well, I kind of thought that one topic is actually for also for double degrees. No, Rob? <laughs> yeah, I think so. What I, what I, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I was, I was just going to say to a student is go and have a chat to a, a brilliant, lovely woman called Lani in the college office now. And Lani can just double check the course rule. I haven't got it in front of me, but I, I think I think Poly One Double O Three would have been a call. So I'll go and check with Lani because she can she can just double check the course plans. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, if you email me, I can put you in touch with Marnie if that's easier. Yeah. yeah. Just to make okay. sure, because I'm pretty yeah. sure that that topic is poor. Cool. Like, the okay. students ask me to do it. So. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't hear yeah, that amazingly. Yeah, share okay. Around. Yeah, so, if you go to the reception, if you go to, you know where the college reception is? It's just where there's all the colourful oh, wow. paint. So there's um or maybe oh, like, yeah. yeah, maybe I think could you take um James, that yeah. yeah, James to the college reception, you know what I mean? Just to see the girl the college reception is like over there. <laughs> Very close. And then you can say, Oh, could I see the line? But if that whole there, I'll just email you to do it an hour. By the way, for any students who can hear me and you want to ask me a question, just speak into the microphone, I'll answer a question for you. You can just email me and I can put you in touch with the line. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, There are. Mentors, that was really helpful. See you, Jessica. Yeah, you. Just drop me a line if you need to. Thanks, See you guys. Yeah, it will like show up on the campus, um, class page. 
Yeah, that's because I'm I'm in right. green, so like that. That's no, we're trying to sell wine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I've only got about one yeah. 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 So I was wondering if I could just yeah. like you definitely there will be a recording. If not, like you might want to email the topic coordinator and ask if you're coming up online or if you just have to watch the recording. And then okay. they'll let you know. Which part of that, you know? Um, I got a chance to Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, but I was just getting to get the email. Yeah. Um, so, it, so um, where would that recording of the lecture be? So, it shows up on the. So, when you go into. If you've been into Canvas yet, which is like the online learning system. Um, so, you have like all your classes in Canvas. Um, yeah, which you. you Basically, access Canvas from Okta, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Oh, I've been on Okta. You've been on Okta. Yeah. So, you should, Canvas should show up on yeah, Okta, I think. Mean. Yeah. Or you can search it, there's a search button. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then you go into Canvas, and all of your classes will automatically be there oh, in a list. And then you click into your class. And in the class, you might want to just connect to Topic Coordinator and ask them where the recordings will show up, because sometimes yeah. they can show up in a really different places. Like sometimes it's week by week, sometimes it's kind of in one, you know, sort of section on the side that they have recording. Yeah. Um, but it should be fairly obvious, but if it's not, just email. Okay, the so the class is introduction to democracy and government. So that's Rob. That's Rob, who's oh, just the not there anymore. The but guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, okay. So I could even just message him now, um, but or you could email me, Rob Van Rarey, and just ask him if you can actually come in on the spot or if you have to watch the recording. Like yeah. either way it's definitely recorded. Yeah. Because um, I want to I want to come here like as much as I can because I've found that like face to face learning like is way better. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm like yeah. so hard, I get so distracted. I'm like it's so hard to keep focused. My desk in my home is unfortunately right next to the PlayStation. I can't keep focus. I mean, that's, 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 that's my dad's um that's my dad's plan in your mind. Also, um, usually have work on Thursday, so um, also, like Thursdays might be pretty busy. Yeah, yeah. So you can access that recording afterwards for sure. And if you can't find it, just email Rob. We'll, you know. Yeah. 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 No, thank you. Cool. Nice no worries. Good to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you, mate. Thank yeah. you too, Alex. See ya. Mm -hmm. So you have a question for me.